Hi, it's Dr. Mark Fulcher here. It's my pleasure to join you today in this 11 and 11 lecture series. Today I'm joined by Dr. Simon Young. Simon is an orthopaedic surgeon uh, based in Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, he has a special interest in managing uh, sports injuries and in particular injuries of the knee uh, and the anterior cruciate ligament. Uh, Simon's also uh, an academic with a research post at the University of Auckland. So uh, welcome, Simon. Thanks, Mark, and thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So I understand you're going to talk to us today about the anterolateral ligament, and in particular, the role it may have in anterior cruciate ligament injuries. Yeah, that's right. So the anterolateral ligament's a, a structure that's been in the news a little bit lately, and anyone who works in this space uh, may have heard of it. And the, we, what I'm going to talk about today is what it is, and whether it may have a role in improving our outcomes after ACL surgery. Now, I'm a specialist knee surgeon, and anyone who, who does a lot of um, ACL in, uh, surgery will know that it's generally a successful operation in helping people get back to, to this, their chosen sport, um, but it's far from perfect. And just as people can rupture their own anterior cruciate ligament, the one they're born with, many patients who have this surgery, this reconstruction, go on to, to rupture again. And this is a study from a group called Kaiser Permanente, which is a hospital network in California. It was a big study with 21,000 patients, and they looked at patients who had had ACL surgery and then gone on to fail in any revision procedure. You can see there that the failure rate in patients who are under 21 by six years was over 10%, which is pretty high. And this study looked at what were the key factors that uh, caused patients or the risk factors for patients who went on to have a failure of their ACL surgery. The three key factors were those young patients, so especially under the age of 21, patients in the first two years after their surgery, and this may be related to perhaps inadequate rehab, going back to sport when their knee wasn't quite ready. And in particular, high-risk sports, and football is perhaps one of the, one of the top high-risk sports. It involves a lot of change of direction and acceleration, deceleration. So these are the sort of um, movements which cause potential for the knee to be unstable and to damage their ACL and also the ACL graft. Mm -hmm. So the question then is, is, is there anything that we can do to make our ACL surgery better? And of course, when the knee is unstable, when you have an ACL injury, it's probably not just the ACL that's torn. There's other structures in the, the knee. Many of you may have heard of something called a Sagon fracture, which is you see on an x-ray, which is an avulsion of the lateral capsular structures. And there's been a resurgence of interest in what, on those lateral structures, and one has been named, and it's called the anterolateral ligament, which is really just a thickening or, or a dissected out piece of this lateral capsule of the knee. It attaches to that little fragment of bone that gets avulsed with the Sagon fracture. And this is a, caused a lot of press when this paper came out in around 2013. It's not really a new ligament. It's actually been one that's been around for a while. Uh, it's been known in France. And in the early days when we were um, seeing patients with, with anterior cruciate ligament injuries, uh, it was a technique that reconstructing this lateral side of the knee was a technique that we first used. What's an important point to make is that when you have an ACL rupture like Michael Owen here, it's a rotational force that goes down on the knee. So the knee rotates out. And it's the lateral femoral condyle that subluxes posteriorly off the lateral tibia. And this rotational movement is probably what causes this lateral ligament on the knee, the anterolateral ligament, to fail. So the foot gets planted here, you see it plant down, the lateral femoral condyle goes back and then pops back into place. This rotation... Fast forward here, this rotation here you see is what we think may not be that well controlled by an isolated ACL reconstruction. The tibia rotates internally and the femur rotates externally at the moment of injury. And you can see this when you're examining an ACL deficient knee. Many of you know about the pivot shift test. And the way this test works is by internally rotating the tibia so that the femur, post the lateral femoral condyle of the femur, subluxes off posteriorly. That rotation then reduces as the knee is forced into more flexion. So that clunk that you're seeing is the knee reducing. The ACL, a good ACL reconstruction that's strong, will, will remove this pivot shift. But what we're wondering with the anterolateral ligament is if we reinforce this area on the lateral side, whether we may be able to control that rotation a little bit better and perhaps reduce the number of re-injuries. As I mentioned, this isn't new information. Saying that we've discovered this new ligament is perhaps not true because it's been known about, or this lateral, the importance of the lateral side has been known about for a long time. One of the very first procedures when people presented with ACL deficient knees was called the Macintosh procedure. 
At that stage, it was sort of the inverse. They didn't really know the importance of the ACL or the anterior cruciate ligament in controlling the, the, this instability pattern that people were seeing. So their first attempt to control it was to try and stop this rotation by reinforcing the lateral side of the knee. And this Macintosh procedure was very popular in the, in the early 80s. As we got better at our understanding of, of the complex of injuries, people moved to focus on the anterior cruciate ligament, and particularly as our surgical techniques advanced, it became easier to reconstruct this ligament, and that became the focus. In France, however, they've always had a, uh, some surgeons who've added this in as a, as a procedure as well as the ACL. Le Maire takes a strip of the iliotibial band and runs it back up uh, on the lateral side of the knee and then back down to the, to the tibia and sutures it. Or you can make a full reconstruction. So this is taking some form of graft, such as a hamstring, and connecting it from the lateral side of the femur to the anterolateral side of the tibia to try and recreate this anterolateral capsular structure and reinforce and control that rotation of the knee. Recently, there's been some clinical data to support this theory. This is a study from Bertrand sonnery cottel who is a well-known knee surgery from France, who works at a FIFA Centre of Ex Excellence in, in Lyon. He took 541 patients who had a primary ACL injury, and they'll look at their age there, they're age 16 to 30, and involved in pivoting sports. So these are the high-risk patients that we're worried about. He looked, this was a retrospective review of patients who had either a BTB autograft, a hamstring autograft, or a hamstring plus the addition of this anterolateral ligament reconstruction. And you see there the, re the re-injury re rates were 10% in the bone patella bone group, 16% in the hamstring alone group, but only 4.1% in the group that had a hamstring and an anterolateral ligament reconstruction. So this is the failure rate at three years. So this is pretty encouraging that it seems that with a hamstring graft, which typically does have a higher failure rate than the bone patella bone graft, if you added in the anterolateral ligament reconstruction, the failure rate was much lower. Now this was a retrospective review, so it's, it's far from perfect. We do have some randomized controlled data that's, that's on its way. It's a large study support, uh, sponsored by ISACOS that we're hoping to get some clinical data out for two years, and that'll be presented hopefully, hopefully next year. But certainly this, this clinical study is, is showing some promise. So, in conclusion, currently I think the data is still early, but we think that the anterolateral ligament may have a role in reducing the risk of this re-injury, particularly in these high-risk patients. Exactly who we should be doing it on, when we should be doing it, and how often we should be doing it, I think those are questions that were still not answered. And hopefully the randomized controlled trials that are currently underway will help provide some answers to this. Look, Simon, thanks very much for that for that great talk and overview of uh, what is an interesting topic in knee surgery. Um, we're not quite ready to finish with you though, so as you know, uh, there are going to be some questions that have been posed from the medical network. So if that's okay, Simon, we'll, we'll crack on with some of those. Yeah, very happy to answer. So just a reminder for you, those of you out there listening that you do have the opportunity to pose questions to our experts via the network. To do this, you'll need to join the 1111 group uh, on the medical network and post any relevant questions to the wall, and we'll do our best to answer the questions for you. So uh, let's get to them. The first question we have here is, uh, should all ACL reconstructions involve an anterolateral ligament procedure? No, I, th I think the answer to this is, is almost certainly no. Um, ACL surgery in isolation is generally a very successful procedure, and particularly in the older patients who are at lower risk, I really don't think the re-injury rate is high enough to warrant the additional uh, surgical time, and potential complications that may go on with an anterolateral ligament reconstruction. It does involve another incision. If you use a graft technique, you do, do need to find some graft from, from elsewhere, so that's either taking more graft from the patient, which has its own morbidity, or using an allograft, which adds, adds significant cost to it. And I think in the, in group, in the groups which have a lower re-injury rate after ACL reconstruction, it's simply probably not necessary. Which exactly patients should get it and which ones shouldn't, I think this is currently a very open question. Mm -hmm. um, our next question is, uh, what are your indications for adding this procedure? So you've touched on that a little. So my first indication is anyone who's having a revision ACL reconstruction. They've already demonstrated that they're high risk because they're onto their second ACL. So I think in that situation you want to do absolutely everything you can to reduce the risk of that happening a third time. So I do it in all revision cases. My next indication is patients who are under the age of 20 and have significant rotational instability of the knee. So when you examine their pivot shift, and we try to grade this from 1 to 3, so anyone with a grade 3 pivot shift who's under 20 and perhaps say under 25, who I'm really worried about that rotational control, 
um, then I'm adding in the antilateral ligament in the primary situation. And then the third one is perhaps anyone who I've, who I've put the graft in, and I think they've still got a subtle pivot glide, and I want to just control that further. That's a, perhaps a rare indication, but uh, those are my overall my current, current practice. So with your second indication, the one with the, uh, with the, the grade 3 pivot shift, is that a decision you're making in the operating room? In the operating room. So almost always I'm saying the patients in the primary setting, I may or may not do this procedure. So I, I tell them, look, this is something on the side, uh, on the table. And you have a pretty good idea on some patients. That as soon as you put them to sleep and their muscles are relaxed, you can really pivot them. And the ones who've got the really rotationally unstable knee, um, I think that's probably a sign that their, their antilateral structures are more likely to be damaged. Um, sometimes you may, may see a Sagon fracture, sort of confirming that, but really the Sagon fracture is a sign of avulsion of the antilateral ligament, but the ligament itself could fail anywhere along its length. Mm. Um, slightly uh, provocative question this one, but do you think that this is an operation that we'll still be doing in 10 years? Yeah, I, I, think, I think it will be, simply because in, in France it's been done for the last sort of 10 or 20 years, so it's already demonstrated some persistence. Whether it's widespread, I, I think, is a big question mark because a, a lot of these things like this, uh, you, see, you see it all the time in orthopedics. Things get popular because of some early basic science data, um, and those basic science studies and perhaps retrospective reviews are promising. And then the randomized controlled trial data comes out and is disappointing, and then everyone kind of, the, the popularity of it starts to wane. Um, I think in, in this case, it's certainly showing early promise, but I think the key thing is to whether it'll be done still done in 10 years, is that that randomized control tire that comes out, if it's encouraging, and in particular, if the complication rate, if it's not adding in new problems to the surgery, uh, then yes, I think it will be done uh, popular in 10 years' time. Mm. And finally, you, you've touched on this again, but what do you think the significance of a Sagon fracture, that uh, lateral avulsion fracture, is in your decision-making? Well, I think we now understand this a little bit better. You know, you, everyone saw the Sagon fracture and said, oh, that's pathognomic of an ACL rupture, but without really understanding why. Now we sort of understand that this lateral capsular structure, the antilateral ligament, um, actually attaches to that piece of bone and it's being pulled off by it. So when you see that fracture, you kind of know that there's been some disruption there. But, but as I mentioned, the, the ligament itself or the capsular structures could fail anywhere along their length. So the presence or absence of the Sagon fracture perhaps doesn't tell you whether there is, there's been damage or not. But if you see the presence there, then it's certainly one that you're thinking about. For sure. Look, Simon, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I'm sure you may have some questions for Simon, so uh, if you do, uh, you could post those to the wall of the medical network and we could uh, forward to those to Simon in due course. Um, but otherwise, uh, thank you very much for coming and sharing your expertise with us, Simon. It's a pleasure, Mark. I'm very happy to be here.